everybody. Uh, I'm here in Pleasant Valley, which is Westminster, Maryland, Carroll County. And from there to there is my house, Pleasant Valley Sculpture Park. All right, so this is my front porch. Uh, this is where I do a lot of painting. Uh, today it's a little windy, so that stuff is kind of put away. I'm actually working on painting of all the tractors across the street right now. Here, let me show you. It's right inside. Fuck the doors a little bit. Uh, there's a chair I made, um, I think while I was a research technician in DFAB. All right, doors unlocked. Let's see, that painting. There's this little guy here. So that's my normal painting setup. Uh, I just take that out there uh, when the mood strikes. Uh, here in the dining room is what I'm reading right now. Um, the most important one is this guy here. Uh, you guys should freaking vote, man. Here's the living room. Uh, my robot recliner. Um, floating shelf. A little bit of relief sculpture, the boob tube. Hanging things. Um, the first thing you've got to find out is what you're hanging on to. Um, so let me flip this thing. The room we're in right now um, is basically a bunch of studs, uh, two by fours that go vertically. And then in the ceiling, we have a bunch of joists, two by fours that run horizontally. Um, so when we're hanging stuff, uh, if we're able to shoot into studs, this is a big hunk of material, very secure for uh, locking uh, pictures or shelving onto. Uh, the rest of that material that's coating the 2x4s is plaster, and it's about a half inch thick or something like that. Obviously not as good grip strength because it's made out of plaster, but not as much uh, width for our screws to grab hold of. On this picture here, and I just tapped a nail into the wall. Um, you can see that, that that nail's not going into a stud, it's just hanging there in the drywall. And I know if I push down on it with a few pounds of weight, it's not going anywhere. Um, if I were to hang this big piece on that nail right now, it would pull it right out of the wall and break that piece. That would be a bummer. Um, but we're just gonna hang this little painting and I've got this sweet little um, clip on the back here. So I just drop that guy on and yeah. Definitely not crooked now. Um, okay, uh, if I wanna do something a little bit more heavy duty, um, like this situation, um, I, I've gotta get a little bit creative. Um, this is a, a, a cast iron kind of antique. My wife picked it up at an antique shop and wanted to use it as a coat uh, hanger. Um, so first I had to locate the studs. Uh, one was here and one was here. And then I mounted this piece of oak uh, to the wall uh, using screws. Uh, I kind of drilled out, uh, countersunk those screws so I could add in these little buttons here, um, just as beauty plates. They're not even glued in. They don't really fit that well, but nobody ever notices them. Um, so anyway, I've got this big secure connection locking this piece of wood into the studs that are running behind this framing here and here. Again, that's our two by four studs. So now I've got this secure piece of wood right here that I can screw this cast iron fitting into. And it's a little funky. I've got a bunch of materials going on there, but it um, uh, works for hanging coats on. Um, similar situation over here. Um, and I've got a little uh, secret for you. Um, the way I find the studs in the wall, uh, some people just go up and knock. And you can feel when you get that that high pitch, you're getting closer to a stud. Um, but I know that we've mounted um, the drywall to the studs with screws. Um, and those are definitely in the studs. So I use magnets to find them. Those are just little rare earth magnets that I searched around the wall. And once they stuck, I knew I was in a stud. Um, that being said, these shelves here are just um, three boards, uh, you know, butt joint, butt joint, butt joint, and then I shot little tenons through them with dowels. Um, but those are held onto the wall. Let's see if I can find it. Ah, yeah. 
boom. So you see those screws there? Those are just wood screws going directly into the wall holding this shelf in place. Uh, I left them exposed because they just get covered up by beautiful pictures of my wife. Um, but you'll see that if we look at where that magnet is and where those screws are, um, I think that we can probably safely say that there's a stud behind that wall that looks something like that. Um, I hope that's helpful. Here's a kind of um, a murder map of uh, what vegetables we have at the garden and what dates we planted them. Uh, here's kind of a running list of things for me to do, stuff we need uh, as a reminder to have fun. Let's go see my wife. There's Carlton's bathroom. I have a picture of our dear mustache. Uh, and there's my wife, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Basement stairs, uh, potato storage as well. All right, so there's my water treatment system. I keep a record of every time I change out the quartz sleeve as well as when I clean it. I keep my new filters uh, as well as my filter wrench right next to the inline sediment filter, and then I keep a record of every time I change that filter. I got some paint and marker storage, some to-do board things, a uh, pegboard of tools. I would say that this um, pegboard full of tools is probably like the most useful tools for me, or the things that I'm always grabbing. Um, aside from that pegboard, I think my probably Next most used section is over here with my ratchet set um, and my power drill and then a, a, an array of bits and fittings and things like that. Um, that's also where I keep all my owner's manuals, which I read all the time. Shoes disorganized, uh, glass bottles I'm hoarding, um, sprinkler system, everything I'm working on table, air compressor, table full of things I don't know where to put. Uh, let's see. Uh, welder. Uh, hold on, I need more light. Welder, uh, wood storage, soft stuff storage, uh, chair project storage, uh, dartboard, ooh, uh, springy stuff. Um, yeah, up there. Uh, drill press, two router table, situations, uh, vice, stationary sander, uh, chop saw, welding stuff on the bottom, scroll saw, band saw, um, vacuum, electronics table, also where I keep my ratchet sets and my drill bits close to the electrical panel. Those things just seem to all kind of go together. Uh, here is ratty furniture, uh, restoring and garden storage and a tennis ball shooting machine. Um, there's a bar cart my wife and I have been working on. A um, pile of other, other crap. This is my furnace. I keep the filters for that right there in that box. Uh, and you can see right there is where I notate every time I change that filter. Old kinetic sculpture, treadmill, the essentials. All right, that's uh, the basement. We have our automatic soap dispenser with our laundry tub. Also note, uh, whenever I work on my appliances, I, I kind of write notes about it on the wall. Um, that's where I clean the vent for the dryer there. That's when I drain the water here. Um, here's some more gardening stuff. Uh, hey, I, I wanted to just quickly highlight that if you look here, uh, I've got concrete walls in my basement. So I, I don't want to shoot a bunch of concrete anchors into my walls or put holes in my foundation. That's kind of how I look at that. So uh, if I, because I didn't have studs and I didn't want to put holes in the concrete, uh, my last choice was, look at these joists um, going across the top. That's the only thing that uh, is kind of tying that whole shelf up together right now. Um, so I've got this two by four here screwed into the joist that way. And then I've got this two by four here screwed into the joist that way. Um, so that kind of anchors me in. And then I actually built down from there 
uh, with some spare wood that I had. And this piece is literally just standing on the ground. Um, so it is support from under, oh shit. Um, it is support from underneath, but it's not actually fastened to the wall down there. All that magic happens up at the top. Um, so that's a kind of tricky situation. There. The tractor stuff. Uh, over here, uh, we have some plans for a rain garden. Uh, sort of Google culture uh, solution for our property. Uh, I can get into that. This is my property. Here's a drawing that Lauren and I did of kind of some of the impervious surfaces on our property. Um, so that there's our house. This is this big, ugly concrete driveway that we have. So the water is running in that direction. And um, because all these impervious surfaces is actually polluted at that point. Um, we have a Bear Creek, which is right at the back of our property. That's a dirty fingernail. Um, so the, anyway, the water is running this way, and if we don't do something to mitigate that pollution um, from these impervious surfaces, then that water ends up in our garden, which is right here, and then ultimately in the Bear Creek. Um, we don't want that, uh, which is why we're doing this project. So we've located as well... Um, Areas that get full sun, indicated by yellow, and then the green areas are foliage, um, blockages of the sun, essentially. Um, so we determined that the optimal point for our Hugel Culture Rain Garden is actually at the base of my driveway. So you see these um, uh, horizontal lines, they're perpendicular to the flow of water. So we know if we put a really good rain garden in somewhere right here, it's going to do a lot to mitigate at least the water coming off of the road and shooting down through our property. Okay, it's a beautiful day in Pleasant Valley. Um, here's this morning's uh, work. Uh, I went and harvested another run of bamboo. Um, so I've got that all kind of tied up in the truck for transporting home. Here's where it goes next, straight to the ground, and then I kind of uh, strip it of the smaller branches so I just have long sections to work with. Um, that's also kind of where my Hugel culture uh, rain collection ditch is being dug. Uh, so I basically fill that with limbs and brush and then I top it all off with soil. It, it creates a big sponge its garden. And Here we have um, uh, a, a bush that was kind of falling under its own weight. So I used some of these bamboo uh, shoots as support system. So there I'm using it as a trellis. Um, we actually have this funny, man, concrete's weird around here because the guy who used to live here was a concrete contractor. But anyway, we have the sidewalk and um, all this mulch in my flower beds wash off into the sidewalk. So I've kind of built this sort of Braveheart style fence around my garden in certain areas to prevent it from washing out during rainstorms. Um, here's, here's gonna be spaghetti squash, so I've also built a sort of makeshift trellis for the vines to crawl up. Uh, more of my Braveheart wall there. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of inspired by initial garden fence solutions. Uh, I wanted to show you my big garden. Uh, so this is about 30 feet by 30 feet, I think, something like that. Um, the fence is made kind of a wattle and daub style of weaving just fallen shrubs, branches, uh, uh, bamboo that I've been collecting recently. The gate is of course an old box spring. Here's a another view of the fence for the garden. Um, all those glass bottles. I've been collecting for another project, and while I'm waiting for the rain to take the labels off of them for me, uh, I'm using them to keep groundhogs out. Uh, groundhogs, rabbit, deer, they are the real jerks around here. Um, so, anyway, that's what prompted the waddle and dog fence situation. I got a few raised beds in here. Uh, one, two, and three. I used um, two by fours left over from an old project at work. 
to build those last year. Uh, growing some seeds from start in uh, garbage that we pulled out of the ditch. Um, and we just made little greenhouses out of it and we're kind of seeing how that's going. You can see there's a bunch of condensation built up on that guy. It's working all right. These are mostly leafy greens, radishes, and some carrots. Um, over here we have uh, garlic and potatoes. And then I got a little greenhouse over here that we got some strawberries in there. These are just some old doors um, that I collected for this specific purpose. Um, uh, the metal frame is actually remnants of a sculpture I did for my senior thesis. Uh, more on that in a minute, but let's walk past here. So uh, we're getting ready for uh, tomato and squash season. So I've actually built this bamboo trellis. Um, that was the original inspiration for um, uh, harvesting a bunch of local bamboo. Here's the kind of close up of some of the joinery I did. Um, uh, so you could latch it together. What I did here is a uh, mortise and tenon kind of situation. I'm basically just sticking it with pins that are going in um, you know, perpendicular orientation. So I pre-drill uh, these holes and then I just find a bunch of branches of bamboo that fit that hole. And I mean, that, that's pretty freaking sturdy. Um, I'm vigorously shaking it with my strong arm right now and it's not going anywhere. So it's not always pretty. Uh, I screwed it up, but I'm learning with this stuff. Um, so function is what I'm going for first and we'll make things pretty later. Um, let's see, and then <laughs> we've got a, a funny intersection over here. This was the first one, so it's uh, particularly uh, sketchy. Um, so here's more steel stuff. This is a barricade, more groundhog fencing. Um, but this is my shed. So uh, my thesis project was called Ripple, uh, and it was a big, big steel contraption. Anyway, so I broke it into other parts and built uh, these two shed sections with it. And then I took all of the wood that I had from any project going on and I built a roof um, and then covered it with this giant tarp I got on sale at Harbor Freight uh, to get me through the winter and protect my tractors and stuff like that. One last quick look inside. Got some lawnmowers all freshly lubed up. Yesterday, um, I kind of gave this guy some TLC. Uh, I repaired the tires with some tire goop. I reinstalled that there motor deck on the bottom. That's what houses the new blades. Um, and I also uh, cleaned out this engine compartment, changed the spark plugs, the oil filter, the air filter, all of that stuff. And then when I was done, I wrote it down right there on the hood. And I learned it all from my owner's manual storage. Um, other things that I keep out here, sailboat, etc. All right, so walk past. this is a, a big pile of wood that's uh, being protected from the elements right now. Uh, there's just creepy stuff you gotta have in your lawn. Uh, and here's my rack for uh, bamboo got a lot of it so I kind of called it quits on harvesting for now and now I'm getting ready to start uh, building a lot more um, but I think that should be enough to keep me busy for a while compost pile and then um, I'll show you here's a couple cherry trees I planted um, this is a the engine I found on my property no idea where that came from Let's go down to the creek. Giant spicy skunk cabbage. And here is Bad Creek. Okay, that was a lot of rambling. I hope some of that was helpful. If you guys have any questions or want to reach out to me, uh, feel free. I'll be here at the Pleasant Valley Sculpture Park. Um, if you can't end strong, end with a cat. <laughs>